lunch, Mike? No, you guys go along. And uh, look, don't stay too long. How can we stay too long? We've only got enough money to eat about five minutes worth. And she was getting there and back. I just leave your private life out of it. Now, let me remind you, this is a business office. I want you back prompt, okay? Good thing you reminded us. Dora, where are we going to have lunch today? Well, I thought we'd be here today for a change. <laughs> What's that thing? It's cheaper than taking you out to a restaurant. Yeah, well, don't you be discouraged. We get the McKeever contract, baby. I'm going to take you to lunch at 21. When will that be? Well, Mac promised to call me today. Well, why did you call him? Oh, no, never chase a client. Never let a client know that you're hungry. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Once they sense that you're hungry and you want the business... <laughs> well, well. Hello? Hello, I'm Mr. McKeever. Uh, hi. No, there's, there's nothing wrong with me, sir. It must be the phone. <laughs> That's right, sir. You, uh, probably called to confirm the order for the service. Well, let me tell you, sir, you won't be sorry. We're going to do a good job for you. What's that? You, 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 you change your mind? You, you're going to cancel? You sure you don't? Uh, yes, sir. Well, maybe it's just as well, sir. I, I don't think we could handle the business anyway. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. <laughs> no, McKeever. I never discuss business during lunch hours. Dora, pass me an egg, huh? <laughs> yeah. Too bad we lost that account. Well, we didn't lose it entirely. Max said he'd call in a year or two. Mike, seriously, I'm very worried about our business. I don't think this office is being run in a business-like manner. Well, we don't like the way I handle things. Maybe you'd like to take a crack at it. Maybe you think that you could run it better, huh? All right, I'll do it on one condition. If I take charge, everybody here is working for me, including you. Okay, boss, you can take over right now, right okay. now. Get out of my chair. Why? <laughs> Take over, I take over. That's what I mean. You're the boss, huh? Yes, I'm the boss. What am I, then? You're the secretary. Okay. No, you don't do that anymore with the secretary. Chase me around the office. First, no, I'm not doing that. I'm serious, Mike. The first thing, step. First things first. Look. The first thing we hire is a good sales manager. Somebody will get us clients. Well, this business needs us some new blood. I think I'll call Sophie. She'll be able to help us out. Sophie's got new blood? <laughs> she works for an employment agency. She comes in contact with a lot of good salesmen. She'll know what to do. Would you please remove the hat? Why, are we in church? Please, this is a place of business. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you better put it back on. Lou, <laughs> why is your desk so untidy? No, well, I need all this stuff for my work. Is this racing form part of your work? <laughs> well, don't knock it. I make more at the track than I do in this one. <laughs> You're oh. over an hour late. So dock me. Mike, you've got to cooperate with me. I'm only doing this to help save the business. Doing all what? What, are you going to bet the business on the horses? <laughs> Come on. Come over here. I have an assignment for you. Yeah, we don't need assignments. What we need is, is more clients. I will get around to that, but in the meantime, we've got to have something to sell. Now, this yes, is what I have in mind. You may sit down. Thank you. It's a highly provocative story. It's something right up your alley. The subject is polygamy. Well, why is that at my alley? I haven't even married one. Well, there are lots of men in this country who have been two or three times without ever bothering to get divorced. I want you to expose these people. They're making a mockery of the institution of marriage. Well, I didn't know there were that many polygamists running around the country. There are thousands of them, thousands. Now, I want you to go down to the police files and dig up a story that'll be sensational. Yeah, well, that sounds like a pretty fair idea. I'll get to it when I just... No, I want you to start working on it right this minute. This is one of the stories I want to sell to get us some new business. Yeah, all right, I'll get right to it. No, just... no, 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 Mike. We keep our coats on during office hours. Oh. That's one of the new rules I put into effect. Do I have to raise my hand to go to the washroom? <laughs> Headline press service, managing editor Miles speaking. Managing editor? <laughs> oh, Dora, this is Sophie. Hey, listen, I think I found the right fella for you business-wise. And social-wise. What's he like? Oh, he's a real smoothie. And what a salesman. Believe me, Dora, he could sell the Brooklyn Bridge to the Eskimos. He, he's a friend of my mouth.
Melvin's. They went to PS22 together. And Melvin hadn't seen him in 19 years. And all of a sudden, he bunks into him at the automat. I think he's just the man you're looking for. Well, when can I meet him? Well, I'll tell you what. You'll come to my apartment tonight, and I'll cook up my lasagna special. And then Melvin will bring Douglas. Douglas. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Douglas Aldrich. Isn't that a beautiful name? And he's got the looks to go with it. Oh, Sophie is such a good friend. Well, I'll call my hairdresser right away and make an appointment. Yeah, that's a good idea, honey. Look your prettiest and be there. Sharp, 7 o'clock. Okay, bye. I uh, thought there wasn't supposed to be any socializing during business hours. I wasn't socializing. That was strictly business. Then why are you getting your hair done? Because I'm going out tonight. I was going to ask you to have dinner with me. I'm sorry, Mike, I'm busy. But even if I wasn't, I couldn't accept your invitation. Why not? That's another new rule. I don't think it's good for an employer to fraternize with her employees. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't mind. Please get to work. <laughs> Like this since I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, well, that couldn't have been very long ago. Hey, how come Lady Astor ain't in here helping with these dishes? Why do I have to be out here wrestling with this pot? He's a friend, isn't he? You want him to get a job, don't you? Yeah, I'll say. He just put the bite on me for ten bucks. Yeah. She's the one that can give him a job. Now shut up and do the dishes. Look, honey, I don't like to do dishes. Oh, Melvin, don't you know that when we get married, you won't have to do any dishes. <laughs> You'll hire me a maid. She'll do the dishes. You're good enough, Dora, to be Fred Astaire's partner. Oh, you're even better than Fred Astaire. <laughs> well, Fred's pretty good. <laughs> Cigarette? Oh, thank you. Melvin, come here, honey, look. He's lighting her cigarette. So maybe she ain't got a match. <laughs> Sophie and Melvin tell me that you're an executive for a large newspaper. Well, yes, I'm a managing editor at Headline Press Service. <laughs> we service newspapers with feature stories. Uh, you don't have to tell me about HBS. I've read your stuff all over the world. Oh, I thought you traveled a lot. You look like the worldly type. Yes, I have to keep on the move. Well, <laughs> uh, Douglas, what kind of selling do you specialize in? Sophie said that you could sell the Eskimos the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> Sophie exaggerates. The secret of my success is just the opposite. I don't believe in selling people things they don't need. That's the technique I'm expounding in my new book. Oh, you're writing a book? Yes, Bennett Cerf is after me to publish it. It's going to be called The Douglas Aldrich Philosophy of Selling. Oh, I'd love an autographed copy. Uh, you'll have the first copy, my dear. Douglas, I wish we had someone like you to head up our sales department. Well, I'm afraid I wasn't planning on accepting another assignment in sales engineering until I finished my book. Oh, what a pity. You see, I need someone right away because this is the height of the Well, I guess I just can't say no to a beautiful lady. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Well, about financial arrangements. Well, I'll come to your office tomorrow and we can talk about that. I'm sure that you and I will get along just beautifully. It's easy to see why you're not making any money. You just haven't done enough business under Mr. O'Toole's management. Now, that's a brilliant diagnosis. Mike, please, you promised to keep out of this. Yes, I think it's a good idea if Mr. O'Toole stays out of management. No one could have pulled this business any further down than he has. Now, wait a minute, Dora. I don't have to stand here and be insulted by this guy. And who is he? Where's his references? He comes very highly recommended. You'll just have to take my word for it. He's one of the best sales managers in the country. There's no need to defend me, Dora. I just can't do my best work when there is friction in the office. Oh, please, Doug. You promised to help me out. I'm sorry. If you'll just give me a consultation fee of uh, $100, I'll be on my way. Did you, Dora, did you... Uh, $100? $100, $100 for what? Well, that's only half of what I generally get. I'm only doing this for my friend Dora. Mike, if you don't keep quiet, I'm going to quit, too. No, no, you can't. No. <laughs> You're the boss, remember? Why don't we go to lunch, Doug, and talk this over? All right. For you, I'll eat lunch. <laughs> You'll like Mike as soon as you get to know him. If I stay, it'll be on account of you, not Mike. You stay? 
Only on condition that I report directly to you and not that bumblehead old tool. All right, I promise. I promise he won't give you any more trouble. A check, please. Well, this seems okay. <laughs> you do have an expense account, don't you? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. <laughs> well, while we're at it, you better give me my expense money. Expense money for what? Well, I'm going to run out to Long Island this afternoon and solicit some business for you. Of course, I'll need funds for entertainment and miscellaneous expenses. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, uh, how much will you need? We'll start with, uh, shall we say, $25? If I need more, I'll call you later. Oh. Well, I'm afraid I don't have that much in cash. <laughs> uh, would you mind taking my personal check? It's a pleasure, my dear. Of course I'll take your check. You do have identification. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Miles? Yes, David. Here's a Casey Stengel, please. Oh, thank you, David. Now, you can get to work on the other one now. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Mike, how is the uh, polygamy story coming? Have you got it done yet? No, it'll take a long time. I've got a lot of research to do. Don't you worry about me. You worry about your super salesman, Douglas Aldridge. How's he doing? This? He's doing fine. He's out in the field getting new business. <laughs> I gotta see. You're the most suspicious man I ever met. If you had more faith in people, you'd get along better in the world. Yeah. Headline Press Service, Managing Editor Miles speaking. Oh, oh, hello, Doug. How are you doing out there on Long Island? I'm doing fine. I just called to let you know I'm making some excellent contacts. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, there's a lot of business out here on Long Island. Well, have you signed anybody up yet? Well, not so fast, Dora. First, there's groundwork to be done. A lot of these people have never heard of Headline Press Service, but they will when I get through with them. I knew you'd come through for us, Doug. Well, I won't keep you on the phone. I know you must be anxious to get back to work. Bye. Goodbye. That was Doug. He's out there working his head off for us. <laughs> you sure have to work hard these days to make a buck. <laughs> oh. I uh, won't be able to have lunch with you today, Doug. I have a dental appointment. Oh, that's all right, dear. I'll just stay here and make a few phone calls. I have to set up some appointments. Oh, good. I'll see you later. <laughs> Sam, Doug Aldrich. A four, four, and four on Daisy B in Hialeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, I'll call you back. What can I do for you, Doc? Oh, I'd like to see Mr. O'Toole. Uh, he's not in. Oh, that's too bad. What do you want to see him about? Well, I own the Manhasset Long Island News. I'm looking for a new press service. I don't like the one I have. They've been very unreliable lately. Well, if you want to sign up with HPS, I can take care of you. Good. That will save somebody a trip coming out to Manhattan. Yes, I'm the sales director here. Now, how long do you want our service? One year, and you can make out the contract to John Meeker. Okay, Mr. Meeker, this will cost you $150. Of course, you realize there's a 10% discount for cash, save you $15. Oh. I didn't know that. A penny saved is always a penny earned. <laughs> as soon as the contracts are executed, we'll mail you your copy. Oh, yes. Well, $135. Thank you, Mr. Meeker. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Oh, likewise. Huh? Good day. Good day. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Aldrich, our sales engineer. You engineered any sales yet? Well, I'm working on a very hot one right now. Oh, yeah? Name it. Did you ever hear of Meeker of the Manhasset News? Oh, boy, you're wasting your time. He's been signed with one of our competitors for years. You don't stand a chance. You know, I'm so confident that I'll land Meeker that I'll bet you 20 bucks, too. <laughs> 20 bucks. 
Okay. Well, if you got a deal, it's a family. <laughs> you tell Dora I want to take her out to dinner tonight on your 20 bucks. <laughs> uh, there you are, the Meeker contract. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Twenty bucks, please. Put it there, Aldrich, old boy. Anybody can sign up Meeker is a super salesman. That's wonderful, Doug. You see, Mike, I told you to have faith. Well, I'll admit, I'll admit I was wrong. You make a great addition to the organization. Because as soon as I can afford it, I'm going to put his name on the door in big gold letters. Uh, that won't be necessary. Just pay me the 20 bucks, please. Put it there, Doug, old boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, the uh, door will take care of the 20. You know something? This calls for a real celebration. How about it, Dora? I'm going to take you to dinner tonight. 21, the works. Well, what have you got to celebrate? It was my selling ability that landed Meeker. Dora's going to dinner with me. That's right, Mike. Doug and I are going out tonight. I thought you didn't socialize with employees. Oh, when Doug and I go out, it's strictly business. Isn't it, honey? Strictly, baby. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. That's what I like about you, Doug. You have such nice manners, you know. The men today just aren't as chivalrous as they used to be. Well, it's not difficult to be nice to you. Of all the women I've known, you stand out like a diamond on a tray of costume jewelry. <laughs> You're not just saying that because I happen to be running the office. I'm saying that because I love you. <laughs> and to prove it, let's run off to Greenboro and get married. I know a judge who stays open all night. Oh, it's not so fast, Doug. I've only known you three days. And six hours and 27 minutes. <laughs> How about it? Greenboro? Uh, look, Tim, I'm writing a story on polygamy, and I wonder if you have a juicy case that uh, I could kind of feature. Well, yeah. Yeah, we've been after one guy who has been married 11 times, never bothers to get a divorce. Maybe he doesn't have time to get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've been after this guy for years. He has a lot of different aliases. He's a real smooth cookie. What's his name? Around here, we call him Love Him and Leave Him Anderson. You got a picture of him? Uh, I'll get one, send it over to you in the morning. I'll give you a complete rundown on him. Thanks a lot, Tim. That'll be a big help. Oh, one other thing. This Love Him and Leave Him, like all these guys, he's got one peculiarity. Every time he gets married, he insists on being married in Greenboro, North Carolina. <laughs> Green North Carolina. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> Almost 10 o'clock. Where's our female-type boss? I don't know. The last time I saw her, she was out on business with our Mr. Aldrich. Oh, uh... Oh, uh, how do you do, sir? Anything I can do for you? Well, uh, yes. I'm, uh, John Meeker of the Manhasset News. Oh, yes, yes, of course, <laughs> Mr. Meeker. Uh, welcome to HBS. And thank you very much for the contract. Can I show you around the place? Oh, the no, 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 thanks. Meeker. I saw the place when I was here yesterday. You, you were here yesterday? Oh, yes, I came in to sign up for your news service. Sign up? You mean Mr. Aldrich didn't go out to Manhasset to sign you up? Oh, no, no, uh, nobody came out to see me. I came in on my own. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yes, well, I just dropped in to pick up my receipt. Your receipt? Uh, receipt for what? Uh, I gave that Aldrich fellow $135 in cash, but I didn't get a receipt. <laughs> you gave him cash? For what? Uh, he wanted it that way. That's why he gave me the 10% discount. Oh, well, of course. I'll, I'll take that up with uh, Mr. Aldrich <laughs> as soon as he comes in. And, and don't you worry, Mr. Meeker. You'll have your receipt in tomorrow's mail. Is that all right? Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. that's fine. There's no hurry. I just need it for my income tax records. That's all. Goodbye. I understand. Of course. Yes. Cash. Receipt. 10%. Well, looks like the old smoothie has got his hands in the cash register already. Yeah, you're telling me. Look, Dave, uh, don't say anything to Dora about it until I tell you, okay? You too. Uh, Chief, I forgot to give this to you. Uh, Lieutenant Becker sent that over from the police department. Oh, yeah, it's about the polygamy case. There's no mood for polygamy with a crook running around the office. Uh, uh, honest, Mr. O'Toole, I, I'm not a crook. All, all I ever took it was, it was just a box of paper clips for my sister. I'm not talking about you. I've got a big crook to handle. Now, go on back to the Mimeo room. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You know who this is? Oh, sure. That's, that's Aldrich, our sales engineer. Yeah, that's Aldrich. That's also Loveman and Liebman Anderson, the most notorious polygamist in the country. That's who that is, right there. And a 
Santa Dora. She certainly hired a very talented man. <laughs> what are you going to do about it, Mike? What am I going to do? I, well, I don't know, but I'll, believe me, I'll, I'll think of something I'm going to do. I, uh... Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry I'm late, but I have a well, that's, uh, that's perfectly all right, Dora. You're the boss, you know. You can come and go as you please, <laughs> anything you like. Oh, how's our uh, sales engineer? Oh, he's doing fine. He's finishing up Long Island today. <laughs> how's the telegraphy story coming? Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, coming along fine. I wanted to talk to you about that. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to, to write it and then read it and hear all your reactions. That'll be wonderful. I'd like Mr. Aldridge to hear it, too. Uh, do you think he can make himself available? He will if I tell him. <laughs> well, you tell him to, because I'm going to value his opinion and his expose very highly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That was uh, pretty good detective work, if I say so myself. Follow through on that, Jack. You know, I'd make a pretty good cop, huh? Well, now, don't rush things. We haven't got the man yet. No, Dora's going to have him at the office at 3 o'clock. Now, how about you? Have you contacted the wives? I've got most of them. Oh, good. I'll see you at the office at 2.30, then. Okay, don't forget. <laughs> Bring the handcuff. Huh? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Dora, you said that all of you be here at 3 o'clock. Well, he promised to be here. He's generally very punctual. No, but you're the boss. You told him. Sorry I'm late. I stopped at Tiffany's to look at a wedding ring. Oh, <laughs> Tiffany's. You'd uh, better watch out for Tiffany's. You'd have a burglar alarm there. <laughs> Let's get down to business. Now, listen, staff, I've gathered you here. I want to read an article that I have written to get your reaction. You understand? I'm going to read it and we'll see what you think. And it's called Polygamy in America. Well, that won't get us any customers. We'll see about that. All right, I'm going to read it. <laughs> Wives who share their husbands often go a lifetime without learning the truth about their marriages. For every polygamist caught, 200 lead successful lives. That's a very good opening paragraph. Don't you think so, Doug? I don't like the subject. <laughs> it has impact. <laughs> yes. Now, it is the opinion of Lieutenant Tim Becker of the New York Police Department that the most notorious polygamist at large today is a smooth, clean-cut looking young man of about 30 who is known as Loveman Lieben Anderson, alias Danny Arno, alias Douglas Aldrich, presently employed as sales engineer for the headline press service. Mike, what is this, a practical joke? This is a prima. Oh, no, you don't, Loveman Lieben. I've never been married in my life. You haven't, huh? We'll see about that. Okay, Tim. <laughs> Come on, come on. Hey, look, Tim. I want to charge this guy with stealing $135. And I gave him $25 of my own money. You oh, too? Okay, I don't even dine for a cup of coffee. Come on, let's leave him. I'll never trust another woman in my life. Take a letter. Yes, boss. Yours of the... Mike. Uh, yes. Chase me around the office. <laughs> Control? Hmm? Brought you a little present. A present from the police department? Yep. Got a check here for five hundred dollars made out to Michael O'Toole. The rewards for the capture of Love 'em and Leave 'em Anderson alias Douglas Allridge. Well, what do you think of that, Dora? Five hundred dollars. Oh. <laughs> Proves one thing. What's that? At least we made a profit while I was running the business. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that. 